What is a stored procedure and why do we need them? So a stored procedure is a group of one or more database statements stored in the database's data dictionary. Stored procedures can be called from TSQL using an execute command. They can be called from a program outside the database server, such as a web server or a client program, perhaps maybe a program located on a computer. And in this class, we will be focusing on calling stored procedures using TSQL. Also, you'll find that people call stored procedures stored prox or prox or sometimes sprox. So again, think of a stored procedure as a collection of statements that have been um, stored on the database. And then when you call that one object or collection of statements, all the statements in that body will execute. So here we have an example of a stored procedure. I don't want you to get too intimidated by everything. We will go through constructing stored procedures and learning about all these elements in a future part of the course, but I think it's important for you to at least start to learn an overview of what the pieces are. So the first thing I want to point out is that each stored procedure has a name. So here we have a stored procedure called USP Find Employee. So as you can imagine, I've named this stored procedure off of what it's going to do, which is to find an employee in our database. This procedure accepts a parameter that allows us to receive an input and then use that input later on in the stored procedure to do something. So we are going to be taking the business entity ID, which is a primary key from the human resources employee table. We'll be using that to look up employees. So here we have now the stored procedure name and the parameter. The items in green here are the items that get executed by the stored procedure. So we have a couple of statements that are being run. Set no count on tells the database to not report how many rows are brought back in the query. It's for efficiency purposes. And then we actually have the meat of our sort procedure, which is the select statement. And hopefully this is very familiar to you. It's a select statement that's going into our human resources employee table and selecting a business entity ID where the business entity ID is equal to this value here, which happens to be the parameter that was passed in. And again, we will talk about the mechanics of parameters later on, but just for now, assume that if a, a value of 50 was brought into this parameter, that we would be running a select statement where business entity ID equals 50. When this select statement runs, then a result set is returned. So whatever calls this stored procedure, we'll get back a result set of rows of what was found from the select. So in this case, it'll be a single row of this employee with their entity ID, their ID number, login, job title, and hire date. In summary, the stored procedure has a name, there's inputs to the stored procedure, there's an execution of the stored procedure, and then ultimately there are results that are output from the stored procedure. Why do we need stored procedures? One reason is for maintainability. Stored procedures provide one location to keep tricky code. So instead of having to replicate a series of program steps or database code in several locations within your database, you can put them in one place within the stored procedure and then just call that code from one location which encourages modular programming. And as you can imagine, centralized code is easier to troubleshoot and it's much easier than to chase down gremlins or troublesome areas within your database. Another reason to use search procedures is to encapsulate business logic. In this fashion, we can keep rules 
consistent between calling programs such as programs that are calling our database from either Excel or C Sharp or Power BI they can call a stored procedure and get the same consistent results as opposed to using um, a query that they may have constructed on their own. Also stored procedures provide stronger security. They help assuage SQL injection attacks and they can also control what code a user can see. So if you have sensitive queries you can avoid having uh, users actually see the query code that is run. They can only call the stored procedure but they can't actually see what SQL makes up the stored procedure. So that gives you control over that as well as you also have control over who can actually execute a stored procedure. And then lastly, stored procedures also bring with them some efficiencies. With the logic being stored on the server, we can avoid some network traffic. So as opposed to having to send multiple commands from a client to a database, we can send one command to say, execute a stored procedure, which then will execute our multiple commands. In addition, stored procedures are cached on the database server. So once they are run, they are ready to run again. Now you should have an appreciation for what a stored procedure is and why we need them. I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.